So for the last five years, I've been obsessed with a single question. And that question is, how do you change yourself? And the obsession for that question came from a conversation with my dentist. Now, I'm terrified of the dentist. And so when my dentist speaks to me, I'm, tending, I'm in, a, in a state of listening. So as I'm leaving his uh, office, he calls out to me and he says, Nicholas, remember, floss the teeth you want to keep. So two weeks later, I'm still processing this, thinking, damn, well, I want to keep all my teeth. <laughs> There's really no way out of this. So I made a decision, a profound decision to become a flosser. And I thought that this was binary. I thought that deciding to become a flosser would make me a flosser, but it it's not, doesn't work that way. Little changes take longer than that. And what, it actually took me about three months before I was flossing every single day. And then I started looking around, and I started seeing that everyone was having trouble changing small things. And the reason that changing small things matters is because our collective inability to change them means that we're in kind of an unhealthy place. So I'm from Australia, a land of wonder and sunshine, and there's no excuse for any of us to be unhealthy. But 61% of us are overweight or obese. And then I come here to New, to New York, to America, this fine land, and you guys, 40% of all American deaths are lifestyle related. So we have, this, we have this problem. We have this inability to change the small things about ourselves, and it's killing us, and it's making a big difference. And so what I realized in, uh, in flossing my teeth was that the answer to how do I floss my teeth was uh, crucial to the future of the world. And we're now sitting in this weird evolutionary state where, for the first time ever, we're not dying because we don't have enough food. We're not dying because we don't have shelter. We're dying because we can't control our own desires. And technology is really not helping because technology has just collapsed the time between impulse and gratification. So we massively overvalue short-term rewards and give no credence to long-term rewards. So how do you change yourself? Well, I'm actually really optimistic about the answer to this question because changing yourself isn't that hard. The point of it is that we're just really bad at it. So what I'm going to share with you today are the 10 things you can do to make changing yourself easier. And the first one is next time you think about making a change, only make one change. Most of us get to Sunday and make a long list of things that we need to change in our lives, and that sets us up to fail. So make one change and make it for a short period of time. And the best period of time to change is six weeks, because that's just enough time to fit in 21 days, which equals a habit. The second thing is to break down your goals and make them activities, so big goals into small activities. And the reason that we take these, these big goals and make them into small activities is that over time, what we want to build up are these chains of change. Now, the longer that a chain, of chain get, chains, a chain of change gets, the more likely it is not to be broken. And you can, the only way you can create a chain of change is by doing lots of small things repetitively time and time again. The fourth thing to think about is that it's easier to add new behaviors than it is to stop old ones. So don't go cold turkey on ice cream, just start walking your dog more. Uh, this is really important when, you've, when you're launching into new things because cold turkey is for people who are experts at change. And I'm not, and I'm probably sure a lot of us also are in the same boat. The next thing is to create triggers. Every new change that you want to make, create a trigger for it. So for me, flossing, the trigger became brushing my teeth. Uh, if you create a trigger for a new behavior, you make it more likely to occur. The sixth point is really important. Don't change by yourself because changing by yourself sucks. Change with a friend. <laughs> Get the encouragement and the support and the accountability that a friend or many friends bring. The seventh point is really important. It's measure the change. So if change matters to you, measure it. And as you're going along, create some external, tangible measure so that you know if you're on the right track or not. The eighth point is probably the most important, and that is to change your environment. And the reason that changing your environment is ma matters is that this is going to be the biggest drag on your ability to change yourself. If three of your best friends are obese, there's a 50% chance that you'll be too. So have a look around you at the impact of your friends and your pantry and your fridge and your commute to work and think about how that affects you positively or negatively. The ninth point is to tap into a, a fundamental human driver, which is that we hate losing things. We hate losing things a lot more than we love winning them. So build some negative incentive into whatever, whatever it is that you want to change. The tenth and final thing is really important. It's about changing the way we think about change. And we saw some great examples of change tonight, but ultimately those are unsustainable. No one can eat that many eggs every month. <laughs> change, change takes patience. Change is just one little thing every day over and over again. So as we're in this room full of big ideas and big hopes and big dreams, 
We're all trying to go into this future and face the challenges with the best versions of ourselves. And I want you to remember that the best version of yourself is just a single, simple step away. Remember, floss the teeth you want to keep. Thanks, Nick.